Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Assemblies of God Chaplain, Lieutenant Commander Wes Motter is about to be fired from the Navy. This guy's a hero, he's a SEAL, he's a Marine. We're gonna talk to his lawyer, Michael Berry with Liberty Institute defending his religious freedom. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Today we have a live video interview via Skype from Texas with the attorney for that chaplain, Wes Motter, Lieutenant Commander, U.S. Navy, who is under fire and could be fired, may be facing a, a board of inquiry that could terminate his successful award-winning 19-year career. Why? Because he is a Christian because this Christian chaplain during private counseling allegedly is guilty of quoting the Bible, of telling a homosexual sailor that gay is wrong, and now has documented uh, against him, his commander says, you can't say that if you are a chaplain in the military. That is strangely reminiscent of what happened to me in 2007 when I was honorably discharged and I lost a 16 year career including five years as a Navy chaplain for praying in Jesus' name in public outside of chapel. Well, now the same domestic enemies of the Constitution inside the Pentagon are persecuting and maybe even prosecuting Christian chaplains like Lieutenant Commander Wes Motter. It's my privilege to welcome to the program his attorney, Michael Berry with Liberty Institute, who has been a guest on our program before. Welcome Michael Berry to the program. So a pleasure to be with you again. Thank you. Now you represent Liberty Institute. That's out of Texas. It's a religious liberty law firm with Kelly Shackelford. And you guys have been involved. In fact, we interviewed you uh, about six months ago on this show in the Air Force Academy scandal when they were telling cadets, you're not allowed to write Bible verses on your whiteboards. How did you first hear about this new problem with the chaplain, Wes Motter? Well, actually, uh, Chaplain Motter contacted me uh, he called me. Um, I don't recall the exact date, but it was, I remember it was pretty early in the morning. I had just arrived to the office, and uh, one of my assistants told me that uh, there was a message waiting for me. So I, I checked the message. It was uh, somebody who identified themselves as a Navy chaplain and said that they uh, needed some legal advice. I called him right back, and that's really how the, uh, uh, the relationship blossomed from there. Now you also, uh, in addition to your day job where you work you know, long hours as a civilian for Liberty Institute, you're also a weekend warrior. You're also a Marine officer and a JAG officer. So you're familiar with military law. Did this pique your interest? Oh, absolutely. Uh, in fact, you know, my, my title at Liberty Institute is Senior Counsel and Director of Military Affairs. So uh, my, primary, my primary responsibility is to oversee all of our uh, efforts in defending and restoring religious freedom within our military. So, of course, uh, in, any time a service member or a veteran uh, contacts us indicating that they believe their religious freedom has been infringed upon, uh, I take great interest in that, and, and this case was, was no exception. So when you returned the phone call for the chaplain, Wes Motter, Navy Lieutenant Commander, uh, and you know he's a hero. I mean, this guy was the poster boy for recruiting to become a Navy chaplain. I saw his recruiting videos 15 years ago, inspired me to join the Navy as a chaplain. This guy is a decorated Navy SEAL chaplain, dec decorated U.S. Marine chaplain, uh, was described by his own commanding officer, Captain Foz, just six months ago as best of the best. But then when you called him, what did he say was happening in this discrimination case? Well, he just explained to me the situation he was in, which was that he had somehow uh, had some complaints lodged against him by just a minute fraction of the sailors in his command. Uh, he, he told me that he had not been at that command very long, 
but that he had tried to just continue uh, practicing, you know, as, as a chaplain the way he always has for throughout the last 15 years of his career as, as a Navy chaplain. Uh, as you indicated, he, prior to prior to joining the Navy as a chaplain, he was a, he enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. Um, so he, he has some prior enlisted experience, became a Navy chaplain, and has been doing a fantastic job for 15 years. And as you indicated, was a chaplain that served with uh, Navy SEALs, uh, did many deployments overseas in support of our Navy SEAL teams. He was the force chaplain for Naval Special Warfare Command, which is the parent unit that oversees our Navy SEAL teams. He was also the chaplain at Navy Naval Special Warfare Center, which is where the famed BUDS is in Coronado, California. And throughout every one of his assignments, he's performed above and beyond. And the, the accolades that he's received, that Chaplain Motter has received throughout his career, are really quite remarkable. Uh, that just looking at the, the list of names, it's really a who's who uh, of naval officers. And they, and they call him things like, like you mentioned, the best of the best, a consummate professional uh, and a national asset, even as a letter of recommendation from the current chief of chaplains, Admiral Kibben. So, uh, and his current commanding officer, the one who's threatening him with this career ending punishment, that commander himself called Chaplain Motter the best of the best of Navy chaplains and said that he sets the benchmark for naval uh, professionalism in the chaplaincy as recently as October 31st of last year. So somehow he goes from being the best of the best and setting the benchmark for professionalism to basically being threatened with being kicked out of the Navy within a matter of weeks. So now something- we have, a, we have a picture here of his commander, Captain John Foz, and uh, here's a quote from a letter that was signed uh, accusing this good chaplain of doing horrible things. It says, on multiple occasions, he discriminated against students who were, who were of different faiths and backgrounds. Uh, how did he go from being the best of the best to now being unfit for service in the span of just five months? What does it mean he discriminated? Well, that's basically code speak for he wasn't politically correct enough for the Navy's liking or for this command, for Captain Foz's liking. Uh, because we went through every single one of the allegations and accusations against Chaplain Motter. I sat down with him. We went through line by line every single accusation in that document. And uh, he explained every single incident to me. And we categorically and specifically deny that he said or did anything inappropriate. The only thing in that document that we admit to, to, that he did was that he offered pastoral care and counseling in accordance with his religious beliefs. Uh, and in fact, when he was asked by an investigator, if you had to choose between your religious beliefs and Navy policy, which one would you pick? And of course, no chaplain, no service member should ever be put in a position where they have to choose between their religious beliefs and military policy. But if that situation ever came to pass, Chaplain Motter said he would have to choose his religious beliefs. He can't, he can't compromise those. And so, of course, the, the commanding officer wanted to use that as a basis to punish him as well. But uh, the bottom line is that we categorically and specifically deny every single one of those allegations that he said or did anything inappropriate. And we provided the Navy with a detailed response to every single one of those, explaining how those were either gross mischaracterizations of what actually occurred in other words, uh, we had there were instances where, where sailors were cherry picking uh, just a, a little soundbite. I think we're all familiar with how that can happen, where you 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 give a you provide a response to somebody's question. And your response may be two or three paragraphs long, or two or three sentences long, and they basically take two or three words out of it to make it sound like you said something else, or make it sound like you admitted to doing something wrong, uh, which is totally inappropriate. Or in some instances the accusations against him are just flat out false. And I, and I, and I took the Navy to task to it and said, in those situations, I, we believe that the sailors who made those accusations could potentially be making, in the military, what's called a false official statement. And that's a crime in the military. Absolutely. And, and so I said, that those sailors need to be held accountable for, for their false statements, false accusations against this decorated chaplain. That's an excellent point. We're gonna take a short break for about two minutes. When we come back, we're gonna talk more with, this is a newsmaking interview, Michael Berry from Liberty Institute. We hear this chaplain was also told he could not pray in Jesus' name. We'll be right back with that after this break. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. 
Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we'll fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support H.R. 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that, but did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama, Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court-martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. I'm joined again by Michael Berry, Liberty Institute, who is a consummate professional, but also defending religious liberty on behalf of Kelly Shackelford and their team down in Texas. We're talking about Lieutenant Commander Wes Motter, a heroic Navy chaplain who could get the boot, is facing a possible board of inquiry. And one of the allegations is that Captain Foz said to the chaplain, and here's a quote from the chaplain, he looked at me and said, hey chaplain, do not pray in Jesus' name. Now, Mr. Berry, can you respond to that? Is, that, uh, uh, is there confirmation of that? And is that legal? Let's imagine it is a true allegation. Can the commander tell a chaplain not to pray in Jesus' name? Absolutely not. And in, uh, in fact, the chaplains are protected by federal law, by military regulations that say that uh, nobody in the military can tell a, a chaplain uh, what to say or, or what not to say when it comes to their religious duties as a chaplain. Obviously, it, it would be something different if the chaplain were about to give like a, a, you know, a briefing to a staff meeting or something like that. Uh, that would not be them acting necessarily in their religious context or religious capacity. But when they're acting in their religious capacity, then they have uh, absolute and full protection under the First Amendment. And so for this commanding officer to tell a chaplain who is about to give uh, what in most people recognize as a, as a religious duty, which is an invocation or benediction, uh, the, to tell a chaplain, don't pray in Jesus' name, is in effect the government regulating and or censoring the religious speech of a person acting in their religious capacity. And you can't do that under federal law, military regulations, even federal court cases say that. Well, I agree with you in principle, uh, but for the last eight years, Congress has failed to pass the Walter Jones Amendment, which was in the NDAA, uh, but it was always stripped out by Democrats in the Senate that specifically protected a chaplain's right to end his prayer according to his or her own faith. So we're hoping that people will petition Congress to strengthen the existing law, but I agree with you that it's unconstitutional. It's a violation of the First Amendment for any government official, especially a commander, to tell a chaplain how to pray. That chaplain should be answering to his or her civilian bishop in religious matters when it comes to how they preach the gospel in church, when it comes to how they say a prayer during a ceremony. Or what about the idea of private counseling behind closed doors. Chaplains have 100% confidentiality. If a sailor comes for, for religious counseling, should the chaplain be allowed to give religious counseling or can they only give secular counseling? 
They absolutely are allowed to. I mean, it's their job. In, in other words, why do we even have chaplains if they're not going to be allowed to do their job in accordance with their religious beliefs? Uh, what what Captain Foss seem to be seems to be asking here is to, for us to have, uh, in effect, a glorified summer camp counselor and not a chaplain. The problem is is that our military deserves to have chaplains because we need chaplains. Service members will tell you the chaplain provides something that nobody else in the military can provide. In fact, the Supreme Court, or not the Supreme Court, excuse me, but federal courts have actually recognized that, that that is exactly why we have chaplains, because they are the only people in uniform in our military that can provide for the free exercise of religion. And so, or at least they facilitate it. And so when a service member has nowhere else to turn, often the chaplain is the person they turn to for spiritual advice, spiritual counseling, and that needs to be done behind closed doors in, in, in privacy in order to protect confidentiality. You don't want that stuff getting out in, in necessarily in public. At least if I were a service member going to a chaplain, I wouldn't want that stuff being out in the public. So uh, that's an important thing to, to consider. And also, uh, as you mentioned, answering to their religious leaders, that's, that's another important factor to consider here is that chaplains in the military are somewhat uh, unique as well in that they, they do have a military chain of command to which they answer, but they also have their religious chain of command. In other words, uh, for Chaplain Motter, for example, as an Assemblies of God chaplain, he, he's required to be endorsed by the Assemblies of God. This is in federal law and in DOD regulations. If a chaplain does not have an endorsement from a, from a DOD-approved denomination, they can't be a chaplain. Just It's, it's plain as day. You just as simple as that, you can't be a chaplain. And so if a chaplain does anything, says anything, that is contrary to the teachings of their denominational endorser, that endorser has the right to withdraw and rescind that endorsement, meaning that that chaplain then ceases to become a chaplain. Yes. So that and puts chaplains between a rock and a hard place. That puts them in this catch-22, exactly as I was talking about a few minutes ago, where when somebody says, well, I know what your faith tells you to do, but the military is telling you to do this, they should never have to be in that position to begin with, because... Now, now they're having to choose between, do I do something that goes against my denominational endorser, which could result in them removing my endorsement, or do I go against this military order that's been issued to me and potentially upsetting my military superiors? Well, you should never have to choose between obeying God and obeying the government, especially if you're a chaplain. I have a slide here. Zolly Smith is the Assemblies of God uh, Executive Director for U.S. Missions, and he said, we stand behind Chaplain Motter 100%. So they're taking a stand, the entire denomination, Assemblies of God, and many uh, Pentecostal chaplains, like I was endorsed by Chaplaincy of Full Gospel Churches, are actually suing the Navy. I think over 65 chaplains involved in a lawsuit for anti-Christian discrimination. Let me go through some of the allegations now. You say Chaplain Motter is allowed to quote the Bible during private counseling behind closed doors, which is 100% confidential. But what I heard is, he was assigned an assistant, and the chaplain's assistant may have been a lieutenant who happened to be gay, and you know followed him around and started taking notes on everything the chaplain said, and that turned into a five-page complaint against the chaplain by this gay officer, and here are some of the allegations written by Captain Foz now, uh, that cha Chaplain Motter told a student that uh, basically it was a shame in the eyes of God to have premarital sex. If that was said, and if that is you know, a statement from the Bible, does the chaplain have the right to say such a thing? Chaplains absolutely have a right to, to act and speak in accordance with their sincerely held religious beliefs, especially in the context of a private counseling session, a pastoral care and counseling session. This is not a situation, uh, we're not talking about somebody walking around offering unsolicited opinions. What we're talking about are what is, is what is the essence of what a chaplain does. It's one of their core duties, which is to provide pastoral care and counseling to those who seek them out. And I think that's an important thing to, to uh, I use the word seek, or the phrase seek them out deliberately there because that's exactly what happens in the military. Chaplains don't walk around uh, just, you know, telling soldiers and sailors and Marines and airmen, hey, come over here so we can talk. They, much like any other pastor, uh, that, that we're probably f with which we're familiar, they'll simply say, I'm available anytime, I have an open door policy. And if you come and speak to me, no topics off limits. There's no question you ask me that, that I'm not going to answer. 
When uh, I was a chaplain, I made a practice of never talking about religion unless the sailor initiated that conversation. And once they opened the door for that talk, then I would quote the Bible. Uh, that's here right. are some other that's things that the chaplain allegedly said, that homosexuality is wrong, that Jesus has the ability to save gay people, uh, that uh, somebody who was in sexual immorality should be in love with God and should not become pregnant while she was married. Uh, but the, the command says those, that's intolerant. When you quote the Bible, that it's intolerant of people who disagree with the Bible. Uh, is this, you know, George Orwell doublespeak? Absolutely. And, and in fact, again, we, 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 those are gross uh, mischaracterizations of what occurred. Uh, they're, they're, they're taken out of context. The words are, have been paraphrased and twisted to make it sound like something else. And in fact, uh, chap, kind of along the lines of what you were just explaining, Chaplain Motter's practice is to, uh, again, a student comes or a sailor comes into his office and he introduces himself. It's the first time he's met with that sailor. He introduces himself and explains that he's a chaplain and explains the role of a chaplain and what it means to be a chaplain and the fact that he is uh, an ordained minister. And, and he tells them, I'm a Protestant uh, chaplain. I'm ordained by the, um, excuse me, I'm endorsed by the Assemblies of God. And he explained to me that that's important to let that, that's, to put that calling card right up front. And it's for really obvious, practical, you know, pragmatic reasons because for example, if it's a Catholic sailor, well, maybe they don't want to speak to a Protestant chaplain. Or, uh, you know, even more uh, to the point, what if it were a, a Muslim sailor and, and the chaplain happened to be a Jewish rabbi? Well, perhaps that wouldn't necessarily be the best situation. So uh, he, he makes it known right up front who he is, uh, who he's endorsed by, and the fact that he's ordained minister, and then says, and look, anything you talk about is fine. Nothing's off limits, but you need to know that whatever response I give to your question, it's going to come from my religious worldview, from my faith. And, and so it really doesn't even matter what Wesley Motter believes. It, that, you know, uh, that's irrelevant. What matters is that I, I, ha I am required by my endorser to speak from my religious background. Absolutely. And, uh, We're going to take a short break here. When we come back, uh, Mr. Barry, I'm going to ask you about the legal strategy, what hearings might be upcoming. We'll be right back with Michael Barry after this giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we'll fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support H.R. 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that, but did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court-martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier, ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. This is our last segment with Michael Berry today. Uh, we're gonna hope to have him on again on tomorrow's show for a little uh, wrap up segment, but 
We only have about two minutes left, Mr. Berry, in this segment. Can you tell what is the next step in the legal process and, and how can Liberty Institute respond and defend your client? Well, at this point, we're, the, the ball's in the Navy's court. They've, um, they, we submitted a request for religious accommodation, which was to request permission for a Christian chaplain to do his job in accordance with his Christian beliefs, as uh, ridiculous as that sounds, that we had to do that. Uh, and they denied that request. So uh, we're going to appeal that. Uh, we're going to give the Navy the opportunity to make things right. It's going to go before an admiral. Uh, and so we were hopeful that, that uh, an admiral uh, will, will look at this and realize what a travesty this is, uh, what, what an outrage it is, and will make things right. Uh, but in terms of long-run legal strategy, we are not taking anything off the table. Um, we'll evaluate every course of action that's available to us uh, at every step of the way. And really, it all depends on how the Navy responds. But again, I want to give them the opportunity to, to, to make things right, to rectify the situation with Chaplain Motter, to make him whole again, uh, and not simply to sweep this under the rug or to make this about uh, the fact that, that uh to, to somehow make it something other than what it really is, which is about religious liberty. This is about whether or not the United States government can tell a chaplain what he's allowed to do, what he's allowed to say during a pastoral care and counseling session in private. Now, I read that he's already been taken off a promotion list. He's been reassigned from his current command, uh, that he could lose his career and even his pension if he goes to a board of inquiry at the 19 year point. Uh, is this a high risk uh, loss for him? Well, I, first, I want to caveat saying those are those have not uh, been finalized yet. Th those threats, uh, they're still under review, and so we're hopeful that that cooler heads will prevail, if you will, and and that those will be rescinded. But if the Navy follows through with that, then absolutely, he he. I mean, he's at 19 and a half years right now. His reti he hits retirement eligibility in September of this year. If he goes to a board of inquiry and is involuntarily separated from the Navy he stands to lose a substantial amount of retirement benefits if that happens. We're out of time, but the Bible says this in Mark chapter eight, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? This chaplain is taking a stand for his soul, even if he loses all of that career as I did. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in again tomorrow on PIJN News, we'll see you then. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y. G -O -D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.